I'm originally from Panama. I ended up getting, I ended up moving to Pennsylvania when I was really young. And so I was one of three other people who weren't white in my school. So very quickly I had to figure out how do I blend in? Even though these eyebrows definitely stood out, now they're trending, so I'm super excited about that. But for me, I wanted to make myself as American as possible. And that came with, I, I made the decision to stop speaking Spanish. I made the decision to stop telling people that I was from Panama. And I continued to find a way, again, as I was saying earlier, to make myself as small as possible. But with that time that I made myself small, I became a really great listener. And I took the time to just sit here and be a fly on the wall and to try and get an understanding of what was missing in terms of the environment that I needed to thrive in and for people to take me seriously about the dreams and the visions that I had. But even still as an adult, I found myself always hearing that I couldn't do something because I didn't have enough experience, because I wasn't old enough. And I wrote something on the back of my paper when I was listening uh, to our speaker earlier and I said, I was living the narrative of you can't. And recently, especially during COVID, I was really just kind of eating that all up of, of continuing to tell myself, I can't do something, I can't do something because I'm older now. I feel like as a kid, we get to have that experience of going wild and doing whatever we want and not really having the consequences yet. And then as soon as you do graduate high school and you have all of these uh, responsibilities that you're like, wait, no one told me that this was the thing that I had to do now. I, I felt like I lost that opportunity to do something big and so uh, during COVID, I told myself this was my opportunity to stop living that narrative that I was holding on to for so long and to really create something that was going to not necessarily wow the people around me, but to wow myself. So I decided to uh, get a bus, retrofit it into my mobile studio, take it around the United States for three months. Like I started in DC and made a complete circle all the way around the US and interview eight voices and seven stories. And the series is called Before We Could Drink because I wanted to kind of create this, uh, I don't know, I just wanted something a little gritty in terms of, of what the United States, uh, United States thinks uh, that, that youth need to be, right, at a certain age. We, we can drink at 21, uh, but we can join the military at 18, but we can start driving when we're 16. And it just didn't make sense to me as to why we were putting youth in all of these different boxes and ages that made us feel comfortable of what they were able to do. So uh, <laughs> I, I really wanted to create something that showcased that age doesn't matter, heart does. And so the trailer that I'm about to show you is going to uh, highlight those seven stories and those eight different voices from pilots to activists to bull rider to poet uh, and yeah so let's go ahead and throw that up if this was your last ride you'd have to make it amazing and that's what i tell myself every time isn't gravity a pulling thing regardless of its name and does the sky not blanket you whether or not you call it something totally unexpected could happen tomorrow no matter what your age is to start doing what you're doing today start telling your stories today one word that always keeps coming back to me is akamema. It means not to give up, to persevere, to keep going. All of that together in one word. is and other people's mistakes don't define who the person is. I try to practice empathy because I know that that's what's going to change that narrative. The world is so beautiful. What a joy to get to see it and why am I wasting time anxious about things? There's so much beauty that's clouded when you spend your days worrying.
Look me in the eye. Tell me in all the speechless ways that I am here, I am here, and you are with me. What I'm really excited about is my first episode is with Watson. Watson, come on stage. Give me some. And for a little bit of context, um, during the COVID times, uh, Pow Wow was uh, a dance that they are commonly in, in his community, in the Navajo community, well, in, in all Native communities, uh, was paused because they weren't able to come together and gather. So they had to, to start doing uh, powwows online. And so when I was on the almighty Instagram, I ended up coming across uh, the hashtag that was used for people to put entries in for uh, these dances. And I saw Watson, and I was like, oh, let me just take a little deep dive here. And <laughs> there was all these like weird photos of him like with a stuffed belly looking like an old man <laughs> and all these like crazy little things he was doing. But what made me fall in love with him was his perspective on life and really taking time to try and teach other people in his community, not just within uh, his older communities, but within youth and the amount of time that he puts in to try and show incoming generation how important it is to have a voice. And so I'm going to go ahead and play his first episode as well. So you can kind of get a little context of what Watson is about. There's always two sides to something. Life is a lot of balancing things, a lot of trying to figure out where that balance is, where you can go to find that balance, what you have to do to find that balance. There's kids that can do so much great things, but then they don't. Is if it's not shown at home or get distracted by these things such as social media, drugs, alcohol, that's a big problem on a lot of these reservations in the United States. Young kids like my age, they get into things like that. I want to be successful. I'm going to have to make that happen myself, you know, hoping that other people can see, you know, like he can do it that I have the mindset that I'm strong. Taking these different opportunities to show my friends that you know, it's possible, they can do it too. You know, each tribe has their own different stories that they have and it's passed down only by word. These stories are almost like our books, our Bible. These different stories would help them understand where they come from, who they are as a person or you know, their teachings, their culture, why the sky is blue, why the sand is red, why the trees are green, why the things are the way they are. The reason why I think it's really important to tell these stories, to be able to retell them and tell them again through generations and generations is because it's something that's getting lost. As we lose these stories, we start losing our teachings. When we lose those teachings, then we start losing the way, who, the, you know, who we are. And then we just, we don't have anything after that. Want them to know that there's, there's hope out there. There's opportunities that they can take, you know, even though they might not have a lot of money, you know, they can still do something that could help them. If you were to cut yourself, you see like there's red blood. If you were to go to somebody across the ocean, they had a cut on their hand, it would be red blood. Even though we might not believe in all the same creator, God, different deities, we're still, we're still the same. There's people out there that fight each other because they don't believe in the same thing. Maybe there's somebody in need, a plant that looks like it's dying, give it some water. A person that looks like they need help, talk to them, tell a story. One word that always keeps coming back to me is Akamema. Akamema. In the Cree 
language, it means not to give up, to persevere, to keep going, all of that together in one word. It's, it's funny because, uh, I mean, obviously Watson's not my kid, uh, but every time I watch anything from the episodes, I always get a little emotional because I think about, uh, I think about where I came from, which was absolutely nothing. Uh, I didn't have money. I was homeless at some point. Uh, <laughs> I remember, yeah, there's just a lot of battles. And when I got this opportunity to get sponsored by Fujifilm to create this series, a lot of people were like, oh, how are you able to just get it and do it? And I was like, it took me years, it took me decades to feel confident enough to be able to go out completely by myself to film this entire series on my own and had to edit that entire thing with a concussion. <laughs> so the series was supposed to actually come out earlier in February and I wasn't able to release it until later in the summer. So I think about resiliency and I think about the importance of getting this message out no matter what situation you're in and the power of being able to influence uh, different people, different ages, no matter, again, what, what your age is. And thinking about the time that I spent with Watson was so important to me uh, because it taught me about, again, just being proud of, of where you come from and really celebrating those differences. And so Watson, I'm curious, you know, thinking about the time that we ended up spending with each other, uh, you know, what was something that you learned about yourself through being able to actually see your voice elevated through the series? Thank you, Leah. And hello, everybody. My name is Watson Whitford. And, you know, just to answer that question, I think there was a lot that I learned during that series, during that the creation of that documentary. And I think one of the main things that I've learned was that it's important to tell your story. It's important to say who you are for people to know who you are in this world and that you are important. People are willing to listen to you and you know, you just have to go out there and people will listen to you your story. They'll listen to your story. So don't be afraid to share it. People want to hear your story. So, you know, that was something that I really appreciate about that. Something that I learned that was really important. Well, one thing too is I, I noticed that uh, it, it seems really difficult to, to try and persuade you to be somebody different. And I know for me, like growing up, it was always easy to try and, and conform as much as I could so I didn't stand out. And when, when you are faced with those situations where people are challenging you in your beliefs or your way of life, how do you handle those moments? I think the main thing is respect. Having respect for yourself and having respect for the other person and their aspects because they may not understand fully of who you are, where you come from, why you do these things the way you do, why you look a certain way, why you dress a certain way. They may not understand that. And so being able to educate them about it too, in a respectful manner, is very important. And not doing it in a rude way where it could, you know, hurt them or it might even hurt yourself. So there's a way to do these things to educate people about who you are. And, you know, if somebody anywhere doesn't understand who I am and where I come from, why I do these things, why I speak the way I speak, you know, I don't let that anger me. I don't get mad about it, you know, and they may disagree with the way I think, the way I speak. But as long as I can educate them and, you know, it might change the way they think about me. And if not, that's fine too. You know, it only matters what you think and not what other people think of you. 
but also sharing that with other people. You know, people enjoy that, hearing you, listening to you. And so that's really important. I think that's really important for me. And, you know, I hope that other people could understand that. It's just having that respect for each other, having that respect for yourself first, and then respecting everything else after that. So I know, you know, a, a big part of this project was to be able to open an opportunity for intergenerational conversations. And I'm curious from your perspective, and, and later I'd love to hear from others as well, is what is something that you believe that adults could, could build, could foster, that would allow for youth to feel listened to more, to feel encouraged to do not necessarily like whatever you want, but not to feel like the that ceiling is so low that we're you know we're not even willing to try and go for it because no one believes in you. You know, I think that's a way a lot of young people think is that nobody wants to listen to me. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say because I'm young, or they tell me I'm too young. You know, you don't know enough yet. You don't know, and breaking that way of thinking, you know, overcoming that way of thinking and showing people that I know what I'm talking about. I know, um, you know, how to do these certain things. And so there's a relationship that we have to build with the different, between the different generations from my generation to my parents' generation and to even the elders, our elderly in the communities. When we learn something from them, you know, I learn a lot of my knowledge from my elders in my community. And so learning from them, after they give you something, you know, you always give back. This is the way I was taught. You always give back, always give back. Because that's a way you show you're appreciative of what you have, of what you received. And so you want to give something back. And that doesn't just go with you know human beings it could even you could even give back to the earth maybe you pick a flower or something give something back give thanks back and so there's that relationship that we have to build between our generations to have that appreciation of each other and knowing that one isn't less than the other you know our generations are knowledgeable are strong and are beautiful and so we have to understand that and build that relationship between us. And, you know, I think it's really important for your voices to be heard, for all of our voices to be heard. You all know something. And just because you're younger doesn't mean you don't know anything. Doesn't mean that you know less. You all have that knowledge that you've been taught. And so you use it in your lifetime and use it for you know, for the different things that you do in your community, in the world. So it's really important to use that knowledge. And we have that power to do that. Okay, now I get to ask Leah some questions. I wrote them down on my phone. And, you know, this was how we were going to do it. I was going to, she was going to ask me questions, and then I was going to ask her questions about you know, about this series, the documentary series, and why she did this, but also why she thought it was important. So my first question was, you know, I was a part of this documentary series. You guys saw my video. And, you know, it was an amazing opportunity that I had. And so what inspired you to create the opportunity for young people to tell their stories? Why? would you want people to tell their, their stories? Sometimes I think I'm, I'm doing certain things for lost time, thinking about how I wasn't really brave as a kid and wish I had some sort of outlet or opportunity to be able to share some of the ideas that I had. And so jumping into this series or creating this series, it just made me think about all of those times that I was told that I couldn't do something that I was too young to understand um, that like when I would try and, you know, get my mom's attention, she would like squeeze my thigh under the table to tell me to be quiet. And thinking about those moments for me were so important and so uh, defining for me that it taught me over time to always be silent. 
And so it took me being able to find myself in different communities that had young people that were leading to bring me back to that young person that I forgot about. And so this is kind of a, a tribute to the younger version of me that I never really had um, the opportunity to, to speak my voice. So I wanted to continue to find a way to give young people their voices. Thank you. And so everybody has a story. You all have a story. Leah has a story. And I wanted to ask you through this um, series, through the things you do for your career, how does that help you tell your own story? Oh my God, can I pass? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how do I tell my own story through this? Oh my goodness. Um, maybe it was through the way that I, I chose the, the characters for this entire series. I purposely look for people that didn't have some sort of online following. Um, that was kind of your, your everyday friend that you would pass on the street. And even though for you, you're like, I don't have a friend who rides bulls or um, who flies hot air balloons, but it's within that community that it just kind of seemed like a, another day. And each episode doesn't focus necessarily on the thing that they do. It's about a value that they, that they stand for that encourages them to, to keep going. And so for me, listening to all of these different stories and these values and these hopes that they have, um, I feel like it's an extension of me and the things that I want to continue to teach myself. OK, last question. So you allowed us to tell our story. You allow other people to tell their story through photos, through videos, and all of that. What is your advice for someone who wants to tell their story? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Why do you ask all the hard questions? <laughs> advice to tell other people, okay. I really believe in, uh, what do they say, that when you surround yourself, or the five closest people are a reflection of you, or something something like that. Uh, I, I think for me, it's really important to check in and see the people that you're surrounding yourself. Are they really encouraging you to be the best or the better? Or are they just applauding you because it's cool right now, but then later they don't really care what you're up to? We, we're in a very self-centered society, and I think it's really important to think beyond ourselves. And Watson, and that's something that you taught me as well, is that we're, you know, we're constantly finding ways to be able to give beyond what we see right in front of us. And so when we're thinking about telling our own story, I think it's really important um, to, to have a community around you that really wants to elevate what you have to say and encourage you to keep doing it.